What's up, my Century Unit? It's the Century Man here, so this is my review of Monday Night Raw for the 5th of May, 1997. This show was in Green Bay, Wisconsin. This is the go-home show to Raw before Cold Day in Hell. The show kicked off with the Hart Foundation, that is Bret Hart. The WWE Tag Team Champions, the British Bulldog, David Boy Smith and Owen Hart. Brian Pillman, the Loose Cannon and Jim the Anvil Nineheart so Brett just uh, come out basically thanking the fans all over the world in Germany in England Canada Far East the Middle East South Africa and he's I think he said to all my American fans he kind of quotes Shawn Michaels and say um tough Titty says to Kitty. Basically, he's not going to thank his fans in the United States of America. He's basically a top trash to a stone called Steve Austin, calling like a American scum, a hyena. I think he says about he's just a bunch of bones. Yeah, a bunch of bone, bones. Anyways, and also he's thanking him the members of the Hart Foundation um, basically thanking in Brian Pillman for his inspiration and Hart Wellman words and he's also thanking Owen Hart you know winning the intercontinental title and he said to Dave Boyce yeah he thanks uh, British Bulldog for thrashing The Undertaker but in reality he didn't thrash The Undertaker and also, he thanks Jim the Anvil Nineheart. He didn't really say he saved Stone Cold Steve Austin. But yeah, he basically saved his life. So, And also, he called the American wrestling fans um, a sick, provided society. And um, I think he said, like, you know, I know you hate me. I don't hate you. That's cool. Um, I, don't li I don't like you. And um, yeah, he says, and also, he also said Stone Cold Steve Austin is not showing up, he doesn't have the jam. And, and also, he called the fans, oh, the jealous. You know, they said that we got all the gold. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I think he said, like, there's gold in the Anfield teeth. And then I think he said to Brian Pillman, you know, you're an expert of the Golden Rule. And Pillman says about. Um, do other, other, I think say do another other and enjoy it. I don't know what he means. You know, like, Brian Pillman has, like, he's a good talker, by the way, but he's got a bit of a, um, a raspberry voice. I think he says, I'm going to repeat it again. Do other, what was it, do other, do under other and enjoy it. I don't know what he means. And he said, I think he said that like, after we got rid of Stone Cold Steve Austin, he basically wants to get rid of Shawn Michaels. And also he was pointing over the Heart Foundation, you know, with a pack of lions, the, what was it, the Exodus of Execution Dream Team. And he kind of refers Shawn Michaels as an antelope dancing. He said like, you know, um, you know, running in my matches, running in, you know, chasing us with a chair. So, um, we'll get to more of that um, later on in the show. Sean did a good promo. So, moving on to the... Yeah, I, yeah, um, yeah. moving on to the next, uh, the first match of the show. So, we got uh, Ahmed Johnson taking on Rockabilly. So, this is Billy Gunn, by the way. Um, the match is meh. He had the, a split-screen interview with Farouk. Farouk, Farouk says I don't. He's not impressed about Armin Johnson. He said like Crush is in a match later on tonight. So yeah, anyway, so the match was ending disqualification. Yeah, you know Armin Johnson got his moment. Then it's Rick, Rick, uh, Rockabilly. I'm gonna call him Billy Gunn by the way. It's yeah, Rockabilly. That's completely stupid. So anyway, so Armin Johnson hits Rockabilly with a guitar. The match ended disqualification. I don't know, it's just like, I think they announced that Ahmed Johnson will face, um, 
I think it's the Nate that Gauntlet match, you know. Um we'll get to we'll get to Cold Day in Hell next week. Um because yeah, let's do let's, let's do it next week because this weekend, not this week, but this weekend I'm trying to say because I'm reviewing just from day 2002. Anyway, so so yeah, it was the DQ, nothing special, you know. It's just like I don't know. I think he should. I think Armor Johnson should have got the win over Rockabilly. Rockabilly, like I don't know. They're trying to give him a push. This is this is why Billy po uh, Billy Gunn never got like a fair share in WWE. Like he's like never. They give him these pushes. It never it completely falls flat. You know, like this, and then getting push as Mister Ass. You know, winning the, the 1999 King of the Ring tournament. You know, you never get. I don't know. It's the best of times and the worst of times for Billy Gunn in the company. So, and then you got the first of two segments, or three segments, you know, with the Heart Foundation finding Shawn Michaels. You know, he went, they went into, like, a locker room, sort of a competitors, you know, local jobbers. One of them is um, Bob Harley with brown hair. So, we've got this video package of, Sh of Ken Shamrock, you know, he's building up to his uh, match with Vader. So... <clears throat> So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna talk about briefly about it. Otherwise, it'd be a very long review. By the way, so he brings about brings up when he was young. You know, a lot of you know he has anger when he was young. He could be in like American football, regional wrestling, you know, amateur wrestling, and sort of about like my family and my kids are important. You know, you know I didn't have a family when I was young. They interview his dad, and there was a scene, or one moment, yeah, the scene when, you know, Ken's playing baseball with his kids, you know, that was cool. It was a good uh, motivation, you know. You know, it's like getting to know who his Ken, Sh Ken Shamrock is. I think there was splice footage of him in the UFC, you know, trying to make him as a big deal. So, I'm trying to keep it short and simple, folks, you know. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Ken Shamrock was uh, on the comité, you know, during, you know, the next match, we've got Vader taking on Goldust with Ken Shamrock in, on commentary. So, the match was just, it was okay, it was back and forth. You had one more of the match, you had uh, Vader confronting uh, Shamrock, because they're facing each other at Cold Day in Hell. Like I said, we'll get to that one. We're going to talk about Cold Day in Hell next weekend. Stay tuned. I'm trying to get these rolls out of the way first, you know. Bit of a delay schedule, by the way. You know, like, you know, just more focus on. I'll just focus on uh, reviewing Moon Knight. Um, anyway, so in the end, Vader got the victory, hit the Vader bomb for the win, and then afterwards, Vader could and Shamrock to get in the ring. Shamrock did it. They had a bit of a brawl, and Mankind trying to come to the rescue. I think he's trying to lock in the Manable Claw on, onto Shamrock, but. Goldust came, also came to the rescue, and that was it. Then we got this segment with Jim Ross interviewing Dustin Rhodes. That's Goldust with Marlena. That's Terry Reynolds. Um, it's really good. I really like it. Um, he brings up um the the stuff in this um this segment about Dusty Rhodes. You know, he's the right to like Dusty Rhodes is dead. You know, and already died in twenty fifteen. But you know, because at the time. Uh, Dusty was working with, you know, he's, he's with WCW at the time, so he basically says fans want, want his autograph, you know, it is footage of Dusty Rhodes, oh, not Dusty, but Dustin Rhodes wrestling in the WWE, of oh, oh, WWF, if you go old school, you know, it was just, you know, he was, like, there was footage of him fighting, you know, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase Sr., yeah, he was trilling, it was a billionaire Ted in WCW, part of the NWO. Um, yeah, there was, yeah, I never knew he wrestled. I know he wrestled in day day. You know, he debuted in the company in '95, but I never he wrestled like '991. You know, he went on to go to WCW. Uh, Dustin Rhodes. You know, he said about like it's, you know, I can't, you know, find my own identity. You know, it's not allowed. You know, and they bring it up gold us. Um, he said he got like a lot of negative, like he's getting like quite song spitting at him, 
someone's trying to, def you know, fans trying to spit at him, calling him names, throwing coins, you know. And also, uh, he said he's going to be receiving um, letters about people who knows going through what he does. You know, because at the time, because Golders were doing the gay gimmick, you know, because at the time was not really receiving well, you know. They can't really do it right now because, you know, I don't want to get into it, but it was the times. But, um, he said that, like, you know, when, when I put that uh, gold suit on, I was Golders, I glad to come out of the closet. And there's also footage of him and Marlena, Terry Reynolds, and also holding his uh, kid. And, um, yeah, um, there's footage of Golders fans, you can tell the fans, you know, Golders is... I hope he's in the Hall of Fame one day, because I think he will be in the Hall of Fame. He should be in the Hall of Fame, Golda. So, anyway, trying to keep it short and simple. He ended this segment, you know, sending a message to his father, Dusty. Said, Dad, I love you. And that was it. So, yeah, it was good. You know, he's kind of got a bit emotional at the time, you know. Talking about Goldust, you know. You know. You know, you know, you know, people, you know, it's kind of like people appreciate it, but, um, yeah, it's a time they're not really breaking cave I don't want to get into the whole cave thing, but it's more behind-the-scenes stuff, you know, later on in the year, yeah, Jim Ross interviewed Mick Foley, or Mankind, talking about Mick Foley, you know, do love Catless Jack, you know, and Mick Foley himself, so it was good. So, moving on to, yeah, <laughs> once again, the Heart Foundation still looking for HBK. Um, so, basically, he, they were, like, ambushing the outside of the man's toilet. And then there was a guy wearing a green, uh, grey vest. And then the heart, members of the Heart Foundation, you know, beating the fuck out of this guy. And you thought they were, it was Shawn Michaels, but... In reality, it wasn't him, but they still beat him anyway. So, and then we got Crush represent the Nation of Domination, competing in a gauntlet match. Um, I think Farouk says, um, we hired, like, got big, tough guys, you know, Ahmed Johnson, this is a, a small example of what, what you're going to get um, uh, this Sunday. And, yeah, this was just a squash match. Oh yeah, but, uh, I forgot to mention this, you know, I'm going to talk about a bit of the, of the Scotland match uh, shortly, so Julian Brett's promo, I forgot to mention it, you know, I think he said to Austin, he's got what he's gone, I forgot to mention that, by the way, um, so yeah, let's talk about like, the, the Scotland match, by the way, so it was just a squash match, you know, he beat two local competitors, I don't really care, and then we got this guy, um, Wearing a green vest, a black um, trousers, hit Crush with the pure river plunge, and I was you knew it's Armand Johnson. He was wearing some kind of mask, and yep, Armand Johnson won this match. It was like psychological warfare going into the gun. I think it's the match with the Nation on at Cold Day in Hell. So and then we got once again the Heart Foundation still looking for HPK. They're in the car park. I don't know. I think the stuff was a bit stupid. You know, they're supposed to be this serious threat, but sometimes they made them like like a bunch of goofballs. Goofballs, you know. Some parts it was funny, but actually it's kind of mad to me. For me, you know, a lot of people will disagree. Everyone has a, a title of an opinion. Then we got. Um, I think about H. Yeah, um, yeah, we got the. Uh, thing. Did I type in H? No, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't really. Wait, wait, one second. Oh, I forgot to put. I forgot to write down HBK promo, so I'm gonna talk about it anyway. So basically, you had Finn's interviewing Shawn Michaels. Um, Shawn's promo was good. Um, Shawn, you know, he said to the brought like show of footage of you know Austin attack Michaels, and Michael said to Austin that you know if you want to fight. You know, a pack of dogs, the, uh, you know, the heart, you know, I think they call it referring the Heart Foundation as a pack of dogs. Uh, so beat it, you know. I'm not promise you I will be here. I'm not here to help you to hurt them. And, 
Yeah, I think he said like, you know, there's the end thing, was it end, end thing to do is to sit there and chop the fans down and tell the fans to don't, was it, don't, just don't like them if they don't want them. I can't remember the promo that very well. Some bits of the promos I kind of remember. So he kind of said to you know, the Heart Foundation that um, he said he's going to compete at King of the Ring. And also he said about like you know there's no there's no was it was it there is no faction in this business powerful than the click. He said about you know the the hot foundation running a pack but the click running a herd. And he said to Bret Hart that um this is America the land of, it was a, the home of the brave the land of the free we can do what we want. And when we want to do it, and he referenced Homer Simpson, you know, you know, because at the time Brett was on an episode of The Simpsons, you know, I think, mean, obviously Homer Simpson iconic status, and he, so he said Brett don't mind, he's on American dollars. He said if you don't like it, don't let the door hit you on in your Canadian butt on the way out. So, um. I think he kind of fret, Brett, you know, I'm going to get your hold, I'm going to get your hold on you. can't remember. Yeah, so, some promos of Sean did, it was good. He said, like, maybe it's, maybe it's time to suck up to the WWE fans. Um, it was good. You know, it was a good promo. Um, then Brett, you know, <laughs> interfered. He was on the time time, by the way. He said about, you know, I don't mind mocking me. Do not mock the Simpsons. And basically, there's nothing wrong with your knee, if you have the jam, maybe you want to face the guy who saved my life, referring to Jim the Anvil Nineheart, and then Nineheart came to the ring, Sean and Nineheart brawl, and then members of the Heart Foundation joined in the brawl, the numbers game, the numbers game catch up with Sean, then LOD came to the rescue, and then, uh, yeah, let's talk, you know, let's talk about, yeah, let's talk about, um, the next match. So the next match we've got LOD taking on Doug Furness and Phil Lafon. This is the rematch from the previous week. You know, I think one of the one of the members of you know, I think it's Lafon or Furness says the reason why they lost because the fans got behind LOD. Anyway, so the match was you know they announced that you know LOD will challenge Owen and Bulldog for the tag team titles. You know. Yeah, it's the rematch from uh, Revenge of the Taker. In the end, Lafon and Furnace got the victory over LOD after the distraction by the Heart Foundation. Then HBK, um, and I think Nine Hard, and really the man they do they continue to feud with the yeah yeah, yeah. <coughs> sorry sorry the taunts was the moment yeah you had the I'm gonna say again HBK and the Heart Foundation brawling. Yo, numbers came catching up with Sean, and then Austin came to the rescue. Austin did show up after you know basically they thrown Austin off the stage at last week's show. Then we got the Undertaker's promo. Uh, he said about something about someone stole his um title belt. He said like I'm the Warriors and Barriers and Champion, the defender of the creatures of the night. Um, I think he's. He said about, you know, my patients were thin, it was the wrong time to cross the valley of the dead. I try to get into the key points, otherwise, Jesus Christ, it's a hard time to remember the promo. It's a good promo, by the way, for The Undertaker. Um, he said, the day of Dom draws near, a fight, a fight in Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, said, I think he said to the person who stole the belt, you know, to this person, Mr. Soon to be was it daily departed. Um and also he said yeah said to Steve Austin, you know, the fire is the fury will be extinguished by the darkness. It will be the cold day in hell. You be will wrestling federation champion. You know, referring to Stone Cold Steve Austin and that was it, so um yeah, I think it says it seems to it seems to the ideas are still the belts, you know. Yeah, it was a good promo. You know, I'll get to 
Yeah, this whole build, Undertaker and Sh Austin's build to the World Title match on the pay-per-view is so disappointed. I'm going to say again, uh, after the main event. So, the main event, we've got Stone Cold Steve Austin taking on the British Bulldog, representing the Heart Foundation. It was a fun match. Uh, you know, it's a short match from what it is. In the end, Austin hit the Stone Cold Stunner onto Bulldog for the win. And then the Heart Foundation attacked Austin, and then LD came to the rescue. But and then the Fawn and Furnace attacked LD, and then Sean came to the came to the fight. And this is turning out to a wild brawl. Then the Undertaker came in. You know the Dong plays. You know Dong. You know the lights gone out, and then it gone back up. Taker, you know, joining the, the brawl, and then Austin. I think he holds the title. I'm guessing like Austin stole the WWF title, you know, psychological board games towards The Undertaker and then Austin take the brawl and that was the end of you know, this is the end of end of the war before the cold day in hell. So anyway, this was a good show. I give it a seven out of ten, a decent show. The matches it don't make me to go and need to watch this raw again. But besides that, the promos like Hot Spur the fact that you know, Brett's promo, Sean's promo was good, Taker's promo was good. It's more for night of promos than the actual wrestling itself. I'd say I, I kind of put Austin Bulldog also in the good. Nothing in the bad to me. It was just uh, it's kind of like take it or leave it. So anyway, so I hope you enjoyed my review of yeah you know, my review of Monday Night Raw for the fifth of May ninety seven. Leave a thoughts and comments below. Smash like button. Click the flat, Click the like. Click the bell. Subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube. Be part of the Central Unit for more wrestling videos and more. And this is the Central Man Official Sign Note. Check you later, folks.